going, everybody? And welcome to the Ask a CISP podcast. So this is our Thursday episode of The Other Side of the Firewall, where we talk about the latest and greatest of cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass cylinder breakers, those people of color who made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. So speaking of which, special guests. So we have Yvonne Rivera. She is the CEO, CISO, co-founder uh, of CyberMite, as well as she is the deputy executive director of Raices Cyber Org. So I think I nailed it that time. So thank you very much for coming to the show. I greatly appreciate you reaching out uh, and being uh, a part of the show. So I would like to uh, you know, go over your, your background, your cybersecurity origin story, and then we'll talk about your companies and its initiatives, as well as the organization and all the good that you're doing uh, in the cyber cybersecurity community. Uh, and we'll just go from there. So if you could you know, kind of break down who you are, what you do. All right. Well, first of all, thank you, Ryan, for having me. Um, I really appreciate this. Um, so my, a little bit about me, um, obviously my name is Yvonne. Uh, I started out, uh, I'd like to say I started in cyber when I was 17, um, when I joined the army, uh, I joined out of Puerto Rico. Um, I really didn't see much else for myself besides just going to, into the military. Uh, they gave me two job options. It was either to climb poles and hang uh, telephone wires or be an IT specialist. So I was like, I'll do that one. Um, okay. You know, I didn't really know much about uh, computers or, you know, what the job really meant. I just knew that I didn't want to climb a pole and run cables as a journeyman. So um, that's basically where, you know, my journey started. Before all that, I guess I, I'm a military brat. My dad, a uh, fourth generation army here. I was also in the military. Um, my dad was in the military. My grandfather was drafted into the military. And I mean, it just goes way, oh, way wow. back. Um, yeah, so we've been in the, the military for a long time. And um, my two oldest girls are actually in the army right now. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I, have, I have five kids. Um, and two of them are in the army and three of them are still at home. Today is my son's, uh, sixth birthday. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there's just, uh, just kind of been everywhere. Uh, I've, I've lived everywhere, um, done all the things. Uh, I claim Florida as my, my home state, lived there for most of my adult or growing up years. Uh, went to school for elementary, middle, and high down in South Florida, um, and then moved to Puerto Rico and then joined the Army. Uh, I did three tours overseas. I did two in Iraq and one, Af one in Afghanistan. I was pretty much with 101st the whole time, um, stationed out of Fort Campbell. Okay. Um, and basically, my, my journey was... my. You know, my job was IT, but back then, you know, IT was cyber as well. Uh, you know, my job consisted of running around with a CD-ROM and sometimes more than one CD. And I had to run around to these big, ugly Dells and, you know, pop in CDs. And as I'm doing an antivirus scan on one CD, I have like five copies and I'm running them on the, you know, the ones next to it. And I'm running right. scans because, you know, there was all of this was like decentralized. Nothing was like managed. And then I had to like patch them one by one. And then you could only fit so many patches in one CD. It was a, you know, it was a good job for a private. And that's basically what I did. That was gotcha. my job. <laughs> no, that's awesome. So there's some parallels there, which is, I find interesting. So everybody knows that and notoriously come into these interviews underprepared. Like I, I like to not know as much as possible so I can ask questions as though yeah. I'm, uh, you know, an audience member. So when you said that uh, it was between your, I think your 25 uniform was what, what you were in the- uh, I was a Bravo, was 25 most, Bravo. Bravo. Oh, okay, 25 yep. Bravo, got you. I actually so joined as a 74 Bravo. Oh, okay, got you, okay. That's how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> like I've been, like my my uh, AFSC, right? Like, so our MOS, I changed three times while I was in. So yeah, I, oh, okay. I feel, feel your pain. Um, okay. But, so uh, in basic, I had to pick jobs. So uh, one of the ones that was picked for me was uh, telephones. So I had to climb the pole. And I learned oh, very no. quickly, I had a fear of heights. <laughs> so I got <laughs> to the very top and I could let go of one hand, let go of the other hand. When they said let go of both and trust your harness, failed. I couldn't let go. <laughs> I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have let go. I would have had to change my MOS as well. 
yeah, they're like, yeah, come down, get picked out a job. So that, that's why I got into, um, uh, at the time it was called data maintenance, uh, which transformed to cyber transport. So I went from uh, soldering uh, boards and things of that nature, dealing with crypto and telephones, okay. and then I uh, pivoted into switching and routing. So it's more like a 25 November is what I okay. ended up being. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Uh, so my mom is okay. army as well, but I learned all the MLS is uh, here in Florida. So I was in the joint communication support element. So it was an airborne okay. unit and uh, we had all the different services there. So I got a deep respect for the army, both family and uh, my coworkers. So that's, that's awesome. awesome. And the, yeah, that's, that's awesome that you have that background. So like that definitely feeds into our, our conversation uh, of yeah, where, you, I, uh... where you started. No, that's good. That makes me very, that makes me happy that I didn't choose the journeyman one. I knew it wasn't going to be right for me because they showed me pictures. Oh, I saw man. that dude climbing the pole and I was like, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> no, I, I, ironically, my last job was, I, I was in charge of those guys. So I, I mean, deep, deep respect for them. They climb anything. Like they had no fear. They go under, under yeah, so they crazy. go underground. Right. Yeah. Like, so they go yeah, in sewers, they, they climb poles. I'm like, nah, not for me. <laughs> I won't um, even climb to hang Christmas lights. No, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But uh, no, that, that's awesome. So, okay. Um, so you said uh, two tours. Thank you for your service. Or you said three tours. I'm sorry. Uh, two tours, Iraq. Yeah. Thank you for your service. I greatly yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. yeah um, um, my, my, was it my first tour uh, uh, towards the end? We were kind of trying to build out the infrastructure of the building we were at. And I had to crawl through one of the palace buildings that we started to kind of take over. Mm -hmm. And I would have to, I ended up being a sort of journeyman, but more like a Lima, which was like the, what we call cable dogs. Right. And I ended up having to like crawl through the crawl spaces of the palace, which were like that skinny. And um, I'd come out with like this inch of like dust and right. stuff. Who knows what else was <laughs> up there, but uh all to run this fiber cable and then to come down and it was just didn't work. It would be the saddest mm. thing ever. <laughs> right. You'd have to go through like all these kinks and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And I mean, it was, it was crazy, but some of the cool stuff we got to do was uh, we got to wire up some of the universities there for like the women so they can okay. learn how to do like uh, use like office products and do some school online and, um, you know, we did some missions there where we were able to bring some of these areas there online and stuff like that. Um, some of the locals actually taught me how to splice fiber. Uh, definitely learned a lot over there. Um, That's awesome. It went in hearts and minds, right? That was the, uh, the mission. Say it again. I said went in hearts and minds. Like, that's part of the mission, yes. right? Yes, it is. That is correct. So yeah, that's that's basically where my my journey started during the second deployment. Is when we kind of started to talk more about like, um, you know, IAVAs and you know, like those right. those announcements and you know right. and that and kind of good stuff. Yeah, stigs, and that's when we started making like Excel spreadsheets. So that was around 05, 06. But before that, it was just kind of like, you know, like wow, wow, it was nice. like. Yeah, I mean, we used to patch computers. I, I'm talking about like exchange in production mm. during wartime, like live. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was just the right. things we did back then just like blow people's minds today. But I mean, it was just that's what, you know, it's just the difference of things then and things now. But um yeah, just the things that I, I I learned just from coming from from the 25 Bravo field, you know, where where you did things in the data center, you did things in the help desk, you did things, you know, crawling through roofs, you uh, or ceilings. I mean, you kind of like learned all the areas. You did some people kind of went towards the networking and routing area that they sat in the knocks and stuff like that. But there weren't really defined socks. There wasn't a, a cyber team. None of that stuff ended up really being a thing until about 2009. Right. Um, so you had Diacap, but that kind of uh, wasn't really um, super strict until, um, I could be lying about my time frame here, but it was probably about my third-ish deployment. So I want to say around 2007, 2008, I think is when, uh, not die cap, did cap was like a thing. Um, so that's when you kind of had to start learning how to write documentation and, 
you know, this is how I, how we run the system and this is how it's continuously monitored and, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, this gotcha. is its version and, you know, yada, yada. Um, yeah, so ATLs that's kind of- and RMF packages and all that good stuff. Yep. So I started doing all that back in 2007 with the DITSCAP, then it went to DIACAP. Now it's with RMF and, you know, another day it's just going to get changed to something else. Right. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's the- that's the journey. Um, so basically, was, go ahead. I was gonna say, I'm sorry to interrupt. Just to say, what was that transformation like uh, when you uh, transitioned out of the, the army into the, the private sector? Yeah. So in the army, um, I'm going to say it's probably the easiest job I ever had. Um, yeah, I deployed and that was really terrible. But, you know, somebody told me what to do, when to do, how to do it. And it was like, I didn't really have to think much. Uh, right, right place, right uh, before, right time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so when I got out, uh, I, I was lucky enough to to get a government civilian position at a hospital. Um, so so I was able to work that position. Um, I started out as a normal system administrator, but I slowly kind of worked myself into a non-existent cyber role. Um, they didn't have a cyber role at all, um, and. They were working on their diet cat package and, you know, um, I kind of stepped up and was like, you know, this is kind of something that I, I know and I do and I'm really good at. Right. So, you know, my goal was to kind of build up the, the cybersecurity program or the information security program um, or information assurance program and um, just kind of build it out, make it make it better, make it more efficient, but then to also kind of. Uh, cater to each department because a hospital is very complicated. You know, you had your, uh, then the, the implementation of the CAC became very difficult for situations like the pharmacy or your, mm. uh, the, the, the testing areas where the doctors had to put in their CAC just to let the student take a test. And then we were requiring them to remove the CAC when they left the room and then right. the test was deactivated. So we had to come up with all these like, you know, different scenarios and situations where we, we would have to, you know, request a mitigation for the CAC requirement or come up with other solutions like this kiosk solution. And um, it was a whole lot of fun just to kind of put together these these programs, walk around each department and kind of train them on, you know, hey, nurses, don't leave it, your CAC in there. Don't leave right. doctors. I mean, how many times do you go to a hospital and they just leave it in the laptop when they leave your room and you're just like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I could see everybody's stuff right now. Right. Um, yeah, so that's what I, I did when I, I became a government civilian. Then I, I went overseas to Europe and I did that uh, a little bit more over there. Uh, we built, we put together the first uh, RMF package over there for a web application. That was a hot mess. Um, so, but that was, it was a lot of fun. A lot of people just kind of coming together to figure out like, how do we start? What's the flow? What do we need? What don't right. we need? We had a lot of people together kind of like just working through it. Um, it's kind of fun being at the very beginning of all that kind of stuff. Um, and then I decided just kind of to leave all that and I went contractor and then uh, came, went, moved to Charleston and did that for a while. And I kind of noticed that um, everywhere I went, there was always kind of like this, you know, how do we do die cap? How do we do RMF? How do we, how do we make sure we're doing the right thing? Or there's these people that are always just kind of saying the wrong thing. Oh, you need this. You need that. And I was like, no, you don't. What are you right. saying? Uh, <laughs> my favorite is when they come up with terms, like you need the RMF overlay or, or this and that. And, and I'm just like, Oh, stop talking. No. Um, you know, those are in, and you know, I'd come in and I'd just be like, no, this is, this is what you need. Um, and, you know, and I, I'd come in and I, I would tell them, you know, it's like, you know, RMF or DICAP, whatever you want to call it, any risk assessment, it's just, it's just saying you're, you're taking your product and you're assessing it against, you know, the potential risks of that product. And, you know, it, this isn't, you know, RMF isn't a, is a, it's not a checkbox. You don't have to get all, all of them right to pass the test. You know, and, and I think that there's just like this this thing where that's what they, you know, felt like they always had to do. So I created these uh, like these little notebooks and uh, they kind of, you know, I, I made these little notebooks so that all the ISSOs and ISSEs or, you know, uh, information security officers and engineers, right. can, you know, can have this little book and they'd open it up and say, OK, so today is, you know, Monday. So I need to check my logs. I need to 
backups and this kind of okay, stuff. So other standard operating procedures. Yeah, and it, was, it was kind of like an SOP, but it was like a um, it was like a little I love me book of like tasks and but it had an SOP in it. So it would tell them how to do it. But at the same time, it would have, you know how like right now when you do an RMF, it'll say, do you log when you log, when you check your logs? Right. So this would kind of be like the place where you, you know, you had, it was all manual because back then we didn't, you know, it was the government. You didn't have the tools to, to, you know, just have a place to log all that stuff. But, um, you know, I just kind of started walking around educating everybody. This is what this stig is just talking about. Are you, checking the checker you know are you doing this are you doing that you know just because you're not doing it exactly how this stig says it right here you're doing something even better you know you're still you know you're still complying you know you're even you're doing it even better right. you know so i just kind of it was more like i started putting on this like educational uh like i, I something that i really like is just kind of walking around and, and just teaching and, and giving knowledge you know um, and stopping the spread of the the rumors. Oh yeah, the uh, disinformation. The false information. The, yeah, right. the disinformation. There you go. So yeah, and then somewhere in there, I became the CEO of my company, um, mostly because I think it was it was the last contract I worked on. Um, it was really really hard to watch that all these small businesses were trying to get on this contract, and some of them just had these amazing ideas and we'd sit in these meetings and they'd show us these awesome, you know, um, presentations. And I was like, oh my gosh, we need that. Right. And then the last question the government would ask it, they'd be like, so do you have an ATO? And the small business is like, do I have a what? <laughs> you know, do I have a what? <laughs> and then the, you know, the government would be like, well, have you worked with the government before? And they're like, um, you know, no, we're a small business. We're just starting out. We built this to hopefully solve your problem. Right. Yeah, man, but you know, this, you've never worked with the government before. You don't have an ATO. Right. Sorry. We, we built you the perfect solution, right? We've architected this yeah. perfect solution. However, <laughs> we're not in the the, the system. <laughs> yeah. In, in the yeah. network, so to speak. So let, let's take a step back. So, okay. So you have a lot of your your training coming from your your twenty five Bravo roots, uh, yes. and then uh, you are you know pioneering, uh, trend setting, and teaching. When it came to that transition into the the uh, the GS or or uh, government civilian uh, type role, uh, especially in the hospital, like so, hospitals still have notoriously have issues. Like not not just yeah. the VA, but just hospitals in general. We we just yeah. did a story. Probably will air this Tuesday. So like today, but it will be in the future. So it's always confusing. Continuity is always broken in these days. So sometime this week, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about a children's hospital that was uh, recently uh, attacked, a cyber attack. Um, so trendsetting, teaching, pioneering, and then you decide, okay, I'm going to switch over to uh, the contracting. And then you saw that, hey, um, I can do this better, or I have enough tools where I can do this myself. So where does that, where does that, because uh, you're an entrepreneur, where does that spirit come from? Like what, what makes you have the drive to say, is that a lot of people are fearful. Like, so asking for a friend, I am that friend. How did you, <laughs> what made you feel comfortable enough to make that plunge? I have no idea. I honestly have no idea. Every day I'm scared. Like every, every single day I'm scared, but um, I don't, I don't really know. It was just something, all I know is that it was just something that really upset me. Mm -hmm. And I knew I could do something about it. And in the back of my head, it didn't seem hard. <laughs> uh, right, because you, you, know, you have so many skills, right? That you, right, from I these guess. different career paths, so you're like, I can just put it all together. But uh, again, it's that you still have to have the drive to do so. So Yeah, I guess I never be, really, yeah. yeah. So you must you must have, uh, like, do you think you, you, it was just something that you always had or uh, what did the military empower you or like what? Uh, what I've always been kind of you? a controlling leader kind of person. I am a Leo. So, gotcha. you know, yeah, that's, but so is my wife. So I hear you loud and clear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I guess I, 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 I tend to be, I can, you know, I tend to be kind of an introvert in the background, but at the same time, I'm very passionate. And when I have an idea, I tend to try to be the loudest person with that idea. So 
I guess when I really sit back and think about it, it makes sense that, you know, that was really kind of like a, I don't want to say traumatic, that's a dramatic word, but it was kind of like a moment where I was like, I can, I can do something about this, you right. know? And then somebody else had whispered in my ear, they're like, and you're Hispanic and you're a disabled veteran and you're a woman, dude, you've got like, right, that's the all... 801C like gold stamp right there. Where you have yeah, to exactly. That's, that's they're awesome. like, yeah, they're like, if, if, if anybody's going to start a business, you should. And I was like, right. I don't know the first thing about open uh, owning the business, starting a business. And, um, I am, however, extremely organized. And because I'm so good at RMF, die cap, did cap, all those things, I can follow a checklist from the state of Florida like nothing, you gotcha. know. And they, <laughs> they're like starting a business, start here, and I'm like, all right, I'll start right. there. Okay, no, that, that's that's awesome. Like a lot of people just don't know what that thing is, right? Like they're like, oh, I have a good idea, but how do I actually get started? Um, so yeah, it's good yeah, to I see. Guess I never about yeah. It. yeah. Um, so ask you a question then. Um, as a as a, a CEO and leader within your organization, you have to be good at knowing what you're what you're good at, basically, for lack of a better term, and what where you need people to fill in and what have you. Yes. Uh, however, my, my question being, uh, so you have to be good at group projects, but do you like group projects? It's kind of a personality test. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, I do. Okay, because I, I hate group projects, but I, no, I'm, I good, like I'm good at making it happen, but I'm just like, man, I just want to take this over myself. <laughs> no, I actually, I think I like working in a group. You know why? I think that's that like knowledge teacher thing in me. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, I think I, I prefer to work in a team versus work on my own. Unless it's like due, something that's due like tomorrow, then it's like, everybody leave me alone. I got this. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, no, that's, that's that's a really good insight because it, it's it's you have to figure out what kind of boss you are, right? So, like, yeah. every, everybody has to like with, during the interview process. I always I always say that same thing. Like, I that's like a good question to be in control, <laughs> but I've learned when to relinquish yep. control. I don't personally like it, so yes, I think that'd be my the hardest thing for me if I if I were a, a business owner would be the the trusting people. Like, I, I trust you because you know you're really good at what you do. You're such a great expert, things of that nature. Uh, but it's not my it's not my natural instinct. So it's it's interesting. I, I think I have the opposite experience. Um, over time, I think I have quickly turned over a project and said, "Okay, I've put you in this position. Go forth, uh, you know, and do your thing." And then, you know, a week later, I find out they've done nothing, and I end up having to do it all. So I uh, I'm starting to kind of have to find a. a a better balance of, you know, you know, gotcha. that in between thing, you know, don't give it all, you know, don't hand it all over, but don't be a micromanager at the same time. Right. Find a place in the middle. No, that's, that's awesome. That's a very good perspective, especially for those who are, who are thinking of uh, doing the track. Cause just, just being a veteran in general, it's, it's just, they give you a lot of tools. Uh, I'm starting to see like more and more of it, right? Like you said, checklists. Like, yes. I have the Florida checklist. I'm looking at the VA checklist. Like they're like, hey, if you do these things, we can start to have a conversation to help you to start your yes. business. But it's, it's terrifying to say, okay, I want to be my own boss and then be, you know, servant leader. Like, yeah, you're my employee, but I work for you because you keep the business rolling. It's a lot of trust. Um, so I, I salute yeah. everybody who comes on the show and then they say, hey, I'm the founder or the co-founder or the CEO. Just like, wow, that's, that's, it takes a uh, certain type of personality. Uh, with that being said, so uh, I, that kind of really goes into your um, position uh, for the organization. So you're the deputy executive director. Um, so where does, where does that stem from where you said, hey, I want to be a, a mentor and inspiration to uh, Latinos, uh, Latinas, Latinx, you know, the Hispanic community when it comes to cybersecurity? So in my over 20 something years of being in cybersecurity or in IT in general, IT, I am typically, and I am not exaggerating, typically I speak in exaggerations, but right now I'm speaking in truth. Yeah. Um, I'm typically the only Hispanic woman, most of the time the only woman in IT in a room. Um, 
So I was approached by Eric Bellardo about um, joining his team. And um, uh, him and I were acquaintances from the, you know, from our uh, military side. And um, I told him I would be honored. There is nothing that would make me happier than to see more Hispanics, more Hispanic women, um, more cybersecurity inside of schools. Um, you know, not just high school, but, you know, primary school, kinder through right. fifth grade, um, middle school, you know, um, and I believe organizations like Raices can do that. And in the end of the day, I think it's going to raise the amount of Hispanics that are in cybersecurity. Um, and that would be amazing. Um, I can't really give you statistics right now because I'm not really good at memorizing numbers, but it's a pretty low number. Um, even worse for uh, Latin women right. in cyber. So we make up a very small group of people. Right. And uh, yeah, off the top of my head, I, I did know the stat. Um, so when I started the podcast, uh, I think it was um, uh, people of color or at least African-Americans only made up 7% of all of cybersecurity. Okay. And then only 3% uh, of those were people who were actually in C-suite and senior level positions. I remember the numbers for Hispanics was either the either relatively close or slightly higher. But like you said, just women in general make up a very small portion. So Ooh, I would assume true. that right within the demographic, it's probably even smaller. Um, and that really surprised me. So that was a, a reason for the, the podcast because I, I wanted to do something similar, right? I'm going to say, yeah. hey, I'm leaving the military and in the military is pretty much a melting pot. Like it still is lopsided, um, yeah. but you see a lot more people who look like you and you have a lot more of those uh, conversations and mentorship and all those things. And when I talk to my friends, they're like, there, there's nobody here. <laughs> you, you will probably be one of the few people who are gonna be in the seat. And it's, just, it's, it's increased slightly, right? A couple, couple percent. Um, but I think organizations like Raices uh, and uh, Blacks of Cyber, uh, Weesis, I think I pronounced that right, the, the Women yep. in Cybersecurity, um, they're, they're absolutely necessary uh, because yep. we do make such a small uh, uh, group uh, within cybersecurity. So it, within your demographic, right, I, I see that as being both um, fearless and selfless, right, that you want to give back to your community. Um, but again, like you said, you're, you're probably... A very, one of very few uh, women within uh, the C-suite as well as within these type of organizations. So to do that, I mean, I definitely commend you, um, especially for you to rise to the position that you're in. What does the future look like for the organization? So right now we've got our um, education program getting stood up. So once that comes out, then we're hoping to get our younger kids um, in underrepresented areas in general. Um, so hopefully that gets them kind of, you know, understanding what cyber is. Hey, maybe I wanna be a cyber engineer when I grow up, you know, right. um, seeing how that could be an option for them. Um, you know, uh, they don't have to be, you know, they don't have to say, well, if I'm not a doctor and I'm not a lawyer, then I'm not going to be anything important or anything. You know, if I don't go to college, I'm a nobody. Um, and, and, you know, so I you know, I like to go to the schools here and I, I talk to them or, or in Florida. I forget I'm not in Florida, but I like right. to go there and I like to, you know, talk to them and say, you know, don't be turned off by the cyber uh, field. You know, not a degree isn't absolutely necessary to kind of start off, you know get into a place, um, work a help desk, work an IT job, kind of start very basic, get the company to, to pay for your degree, right. um, and then just kind of work yourself into cyber. And that's kind of what these programs are going to try to get these kids, um, get them into certification programs so that they can, uh, they can also work CTFs for free, they can get certifications for free, um, they can get scholarships, things like that, so that they can, um, already have the experience they need to get good cybersecurity jobs once they get out of the out of high school. That's 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 uh, awesome and very commendable, um, especially working with younger kids. So uh, I, I finally had the, the chance to do the, the great teacher teaching, I believe is what it's called. Yes. So I went to my kid's school. Yeah, he's a third grader. 
And then, yeah, seeing the kids' faces light up when you uh, yes. had a couple of slides that had like Roblox, Roblox and stuff on it, just kind of yes. broke it down. Uh, and and it really surprised me. Uh, not only did they uh, actually read the material, right? So they, they were able to tell me uh, scams that you shouldn't fall for, um, but also just seeing the the um, the light bulbs, right? As opposed to like, like you said, I, I don't have to be a, a fireman, a doctor, a nurse, like those no. things are by default. I can also do something like this. Um, so yeah, I... I thought it was yeah. cool and I, I can't wait to do it again so it's good to see that that's this stuff is being baked in earlier because yeah you can go to high school but like most of those kids are already kind of yeah, yeah. They <laughs> they're like a hot mess you want to go to the young one yeah it's slightly <laughs> interesting but not not as passionate right so yeah uh, yeah that's, that's that for the future so that, that's cool um so when it comes to uh cyber might, um what initiatives do you guys have going on or what is the the plans look for look like for your organization? Uh, so right now we support Gold Star Gamers, um, which is a nonprofit for kids who've lost their parents um, due to uh, veteran parents, uh, military right. parents. Um, and what they do is they, um, it's actually really cool. They, they have all these kids come together and they do games and games are supposed to be their method of dealing with their loss and they're all together, they're, they're a community. And so what we've did was we've sponsored a server for them. We've built out this Minecraft server that allows them to have, um, uh, what's the word, like a shrine for each okay. of their parents. Oh, wow. Um, okay. And then they have a town where they have sponsors um, and those sponsors can sponsor these kids' areas and sponsor different things for the kids so that they can put them inside these shrines and okay. um, they can go there whenever they want. We can we have like this area where we can have a memorial service and all that kind of stuff for these kids and um, they can all come together as a community and, and be together with each other during, you know, whenever there's one of these events. Um, so that's one of the things that we're really proud of. Obviously, we support Raices Cyber. We host one of their CTFs, their Raices CTFs. Okay. Um, and then, obviously, we're here at DC because we're um, hoping to make a change with the SBIR program. Um, you know, right now, the, the requirements for small businesses and cybersecurity don't really, um, you know, work very well for the small business and the requirements are just kind of outlandish and unmeetable right now. So, you know, I'm here, I have my whole presentation ready to go and I'm um, hoping to provide some solutions to, um, you know, mitigate that risk for the small businesses and, and hopefully put together some sort of, um, I don't know what I'm calling the cybersecurity pipeline uh, for SBIR programs for these small businesses so that they can get some training um, some extra funding and, and that kind of stuff so that they can put together the cybersecurity program if they, you know, once they get into these SBIR uh, contracts. Um, so, yeah, that's hopefully we, we can make that change here and, and it gets approved. Um, yeah, so I think those are our biggest things. You know, we're just trying to get our our, our solution is a SIMI cloud, which is a basically it's a uh, platform as a service that we've built out from from you know hardware up, up to the platform level and um, it, we we've built it using this 853. Um, obviously, we started out with version four and so rev five now, but that's too technical, so it doesn't matter. Um, so you, you speak my language, but <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know, and and we have our struggles too. Like you know, we need to get fed ramped. Uh, can't can't get fed ramps. It's about a half a million dollars. Just yeah, I was going to say, it's pretty ramps. cost prohibitive. So it's yeah, good, good to hear that you have that initiative going because yeah, same yes. thing with CMMC 2.0, like just looking at yeah. training train itself, right? Like uh, yes. I, I'm currently trying to secure some training because I'm a GRC guy by uh, okay. by by trade is what I, what I currently do. Um, and I saw the, the price tag and I was like, like it's, it's necessary, <laughs> but does it have to be necessarily that high? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, it, sometimes it kind of like, it angers me and, you know, everybody's like, well, when you go up there, talk to them about like, you know, that they need to regulate all that stuff. I'm like, no, because nobody's going to agree to that. You know, I can't right. ask them to regulate the price of all this other stuff. This is, these are businesses putting out their prices. You know, this is just the way the world works, but 
I can definitely definitely ask for changes as far as what are we doing to support these small businesses. When they're going through the SBIR program, why don't we sponsor them through the um, FedRAMP process? You know, why don't they get an agency sponsorship? Um, not sure. I, I don't understand why they haven't been doing that. Um, you know, just, just things like that. You know, I don't know that they know that these things are like a possibility. I, I feel like one hand doesn't speak to the other hand sometimes, or I guess most of the time, right? Right. Uh, no, and that, that's that's a great initiative because uh, uh, I guess again, not to be too technical um, for, for the audience, but yeah, it's very cost prohibitive and, as well as um, it kind of just keeps the door open for those trillion dollar companies, right? Like they have the, the funding to be able to do such things. Uh, but that I thought the initiative was for small business to grow, to be supported by the government. So if you if you if you have a requirement that has to be met, then maybe you should subsidize or like you said, like at least have an on ramp for these these businesses. So yes. I I definitely appreciate you guys uh, leading the charge for that for uh, for like, I don't have a small business yet, but you know whatever the future may hold. Um, yeah, I look at the price and I'm just like, that is <laughs> it's impossible. It's impossible. So the goal is, is if, or once we get our FedRAMP, and I know there are organizations doing this now, but our goal is, we're, since we're using about 80% open source solutions to build out our cloud, we are able to provide our services at a very low cost. So the goal is, is to onboard our customers. And as we onboard them, we uh, do the you know automated assessments. And then when we right. go to do their CMMC, it's not this, you know, they're inheriting so much from us. They're just doing this small little assessment here. And then, um, you know, they're not paying, you know, whatever. I, honestly, I haven't even done quotes for your RPs yet. Um, I'm, I've right. just done quotes for the, the FedRAMP readies and FedRAMP full assessments. So those were outrageous. And I assumed the CMMC's RPs are going to, or RPOs are going to charge somewhere very near yeah, that it's, cost. It's, it's, it's definitely going to be a, 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 a rush to, uh, not to the bottom. Because I, so I, I, I've been a, a GRC guy, right? So like my background's in IT, security, um, networking, things of that nature. But uh, when I did my transition, I was doing, you know, uh, I was working with, um, the the assurance uh, group and all that good stuff. So I had a very easy on ramp into uh, doing okay. this um, uh, CSFs, the uh, CIS V8s, uh, and then the uh, 800-171s when I was working towards uh, before okay. I made my, my transition from the private sector into now I'm, uh, I'm working for, um, I'm a federal contractor. Um, but when I was on the consulting side, I did see the ramp up. Like everybody was trying to hurry up and get secured because they know the money is going to start flowing in yes uh and there was a, a lot of people who just would get unable to make it to the party was i felt was unfortunate uh, yeah. and I, I know that's kind of the game but it's it's good to see that you know you're looking out for the small businesses to try to get their foot in the door as well so you're not just dealing with the companies that build planes and engineer buildings and the people who have the capital to have the money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Some of these small businesses have stellar ideas, but they're so focused on their idea, which let them be, you know, that's why we built our company so that they could just focus on their trinket, you know, their, right. you know, great idea. You know, we just want to let them do that. Let us focus on the rest. Um, and, and that's, that's all we want to do. Um, we, we want the small businesses um, that are trying to, to work with the federal government. Um, we want to help them. We want to make them successful. We want to help them meet the 170, the 171 requirements. And, right. you know, in five years, the CMMC requirements, whatever they are, 5.0 by then. Um, <laughs> Most of <unlikely>, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that's that's what we want. I, I think that it would be good for everyone, especially the warfighters, cyber warfare, if we, you know, could find ways to help some of these small businesses just come in and show us what they got you know they have great ideas and, and great tools no absolutely so yeah I, I think all those initiatives are great like not to skip over the uh code star gaming which i think is awesome and i definitely want to yes. get uh more information uh about that to add to the description so in, any and all initiatives i want links to so that way i can give it to the audience okay because i think all the all this stuff is awesome 
Uh, but yeah. before I before I let you go, like, because I'm the CEO, one, I need to, I need to, I need to to, to pivot because <laughs> you already have a lot on your plate, right? Like you're already brainstorming all that good stuff. What do you do to unwind? Like, what is what does that look like when you're not again CEO, CISO, co-founder, as well as a director, uh, or I should say, deputy executive director, right? So like you have all these major titles. What do you do when you want to unplug? So or is it um, even possible? <laughs> um so i am a tv watcher okay and i do work while i'm watching tv um i try not to but obviously sometimes i just can't not work um but if i leave my house it's to do jujitsu okay i am i have four stripes or three stripes on my white belt. Oh yeah, I've been doing it for about a year now. Um, so I, I do self-defense and jujitsu, so that's been fun. Um, I do like to knit blankets. Uh, I actually started the crocheting about 15 years ago. It was my way of quitting smoking and it just kind of stuck. Okay. Kept keeps my hands busy. So it was just like, oh, I'll just keep doing it. So now I'm, my kids always ask me for blankets and I just keep making them. Um, yeah. That's yeah, about my, it. My, yeah, my daughter's made some blankets. I was just like, I don't understand how you, how, how this even works. <laughs> like, how do, you, how do you create something like that? It's just um, knots, literally yeah, knots. This is crazy to me. I just don't have the dexterity, I don't think. I don't know. But, yeah. Um, so what what type of TV shows? Like, what are you, what are you watching? Oh, anything crime related. I, I'm, I'm watching the fourth season of True Detective right now. Totally not the same as any of the other True Detectives, if you're into so, that. So it's kind of uh, polarizing. Like people, like I haven't started it yet, but some people love it, some people hate it. Like what? <laughs> I, I actually love it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I'm in love with it. I, it's different. Uh, I I found the other the other True Detectives a little bit slow sometimes just because I'm not a big fan of just all the the you know, the talking. So you can see I'm a very hyper person. So I like to just kind of see action instead of listening to it. Um, gotcha. So the other, the other two detectives were a bit more, um, they're the interview based and they're just kind of narrating a lot. And then this one is just like this big story and okay. kind yeah, of which It's in Alaska, right? Yeah, it's okay. cold so that's, too. Yeah. So that's what I'm interested <laughs> right? I, I was stationed there. I was in El, uh, Elmo. So I was at Elmendorf. So I'm like, okay, that show oh, in really? Alaska is pretty cool. Yeah, my oldest uh, is stationed up there in Fairbanks right now. Okay, yeah. So I, I've I've been up there. So I was uh, Elmo. Elmo is in um, uh, oh man, uh, Anchorage. Uh, but I've been as oh. as far as uh, oh man, what was it? Barrow Point Barrow, like so the very top of Alaska. Artists I don't even point? know. Yeah, this, I lived uh, there Alaska's when I was huge. a little kid. My my dad was stationed there. I was three when I left. I actually have an Alaska Social Security number. Yep, I got a kid with, yep, it's a Alaskan, <laughs> technically. <laughs> so yes, yes, yes no like, sports teams. Or, yeah. I'm like, no. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty cool. Um, so no, that's that's awesome. So you, you're like my co-host. Like he's, he's, he doesn't like a lot of talking. He wants, he's straight to the action. Like when do we get yeah. to the action part? So I, yeah, I get yeah. it. I, I definitely get it. So I, I wouldn't recommend Mr. and Mrs. Smith that because there is action, but there's a lot of talking. I, I want to see it though. I want to see it though. I, I am interested. But so I, that's what I've been binging uh, recently. So I think I'm almost done. I have like two more episodes and I like oh, it. Oh, are I like, you? Yeah, I like it a lot, but it, it does the thing. It does the trick where it, it jumps straight to the action and they're like, okay, now we're going to slow it down. And Ooh. then, yeah. So it picks see, that's back like up, true, but... That's like true detective. That's what it does too. Okay. And I'm just like, oh, that part was so good. Why didn't we just go to talking? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. But no, uh, thank you so much for your time. I, I greatly appreciate it. Again, I need to know like all your links, last stuff, so I can put in the description. I think all sure. you guys' initiatives are awesome. Uh, thank you. Like I can see CyberMind, I got to get you back on and talk about whatever comes up in the future for you guys, especially with the work you're doing currently in DC. Uh, and then uh, Raices. Um, so I'm trying to know somebody from every organization. So now I know someone from uh, Black to Cyber uh, Security. I know somebody in Raices. Uh, cyber org. I'm, I'm trying to find a, a Oasis connection. I just want to get somebody in each oh, organization. Oh, I can get you hooked up with Oasis. So, okay, like that. That would be awesome. Just because I, I want to get them on the show. I want them to, you know, to, to talk oh, about their for issues. Sure. Uh, as well as like, there's a lot of uh, just good synergy between all the groups, right? Like we all have the same uh, idea for our demographics. Like we just want to. Oh know, yeah, grow, grow I can. Also, it was uh, 
really cool to have a uh, small business owner who, you know, came from the military and is out there hard charging. So I, I have a lot of, um, I, I've been having a lot of military people on recently. So I, I just, <laughs> my network is pretty expansive, but I, I, I don't know. Like we, we seem to be the entrepreneurs, which is awesome. Like I, I like yes, to see you're that. Right. Yeah, like we we uh, again, like you said, like we we get into the the private or the government sector, and like ah, I could do better. <laughs> yeah. And so that, that's yeah. that's good to see, and it's it's great it's 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 great to showcase that for people who are thinking about potentially joining the military. So I always tell yeah. people like do help desk and join the military if you can. But I know things yes. are kind of scary right now. But in the grand scheme of things, you come out with so much like yes. when it comes to school and travel and all the things you're going to learn, and then exactly. you have discipline because that's what I didn't have before I joined when I came out like you have focus and discipline that you, you didn't leadership. necessarily have leadership yeah. right and like I said I, I I hate group projects but I can I can I can get through it <laughs> <laughs> so no but but it's very awesome uh for everybody who's listening uh thank you for uh for tuning in uh this one should go up relatively soon we'll talk about that offline um but we'd love to have you back on the show again if you have any initiatives or anything uh, I thought this was a, a, an awesome conversation. And then I'll know you better. So I won't have to ask you basic questions. We'll get picked up from there. Uh, you can hit up uh, the podcast by all of uh, the uh, the websites that go by our name. You can hit me up personally. I'm at RyRy Security Guy. That's R-Y, R-Y Security Guy. You can find me on LinkedIn, Clubhouse, Twitter, and Threads. Uh, and uh, you, Yvonne, where can people find you? Uh, you could find me uh, on Instagram at the Cybermite team. Uh, you could find me on LinkedIn at Yvonne Rivera or Cybermite Team. Uh, I'm on Facebook as well, Yvonne Rivera or Cybermite Team. I'm on Twitter. I mean, X, whatever you call it, but I don't really post right. on there anymore. Um, so don't go searching for me there. I do have a YouTube channel. I have like three videos on there. You can watch them if you want. Um, uh, I think you can find the link to my videos in my um, LinkedIn so yeah, that's where you could find me. I'm not really big on social media. I should be. Um, I, I'm I too shy that. to be on camera. <laughs> no, I get that. Like, like again, my co-host Shannon, he barely has a digital footprint. So hey, everybody has their own thing. But no, th again, thank you very much. Uh, and then uh, I'll have all the links uh, in the description uh, below. So stay safe, right. stay secure. Thank you.